Can you repeat that, please? <laughs> Sorry, folks. Phoenix was just meowing off screen there. I was mimicking what I was hearing. Meow. All right. <laughs> let's see. Let's just take a little break to see um. See how you're doing. Uh, you're 13 years old, seven months. Relationship status status unattached. Oh yeah, you need to go steady with him. Uh, you need family is 96. Intellect is 98. Holy cow. Yeah. Social is 90. Vocational is 68. Physical is 25. Calmness is 42. Confidence 96. You're very confident. Expressiveness is 68. Gentleness is 84. Happiness is 84. Thoughtfulness is 94. Trustworthiness is 78. <laughs> Holy cow, you're down to five hundred and thirty eight dollars. How'd that happen? What'd you do with my money? I didn't do anything with it. <laughs> Alright. Let's go let's try and go steady with your boyfriend. Uh break off with someone, go on a date. Go steady. You and Peter make a handsome couple. <laughs> okay. You cuddled there on the bus and now you're a handsome couple. A couple of your friends have convinced someone to purchase a bottle of very cheap wine. They're excited about the idea of getting drunk. You are in the basement of a friend's house. You can be excited or afraid. Afraid. You can share the wine, walk away, or act like you're drinking the wine, but don't. Walk away. Could not end well. <laughs> Failure to conform to peer pressure makes you emotionally stronger, but pulls you outside of this peer group. Your social yeah. status suffers, <laughs> but sometimes that is the price you pay for being an independent, free-thinking person. I'd rather have no friends than these douchebags. <laughs> you are listening to the radio, and you hear that guest disc jockey is... Get ready, because you will absolutely drop dead from the shock, which is more than one person can possibly bear. Adam Bum... Bay. <laughs> of the famous Adam Bombay. I know it's probably supposed to be Bomb, but I'm calling him Bombay because it's funnier. And the nuclear waste. Playing live in Fallout 3. Uh, the show is accepting Colin questions and comments. The callers can win autographed albums, money, and expensive prizes. You can be interested or not interested. Interested. I want to win stuff. You can call the show or not call the show. Call the show. You get a busy signal. Keep calling or forget about it. Keep calling. You are greeted by the voice of the regular disc jockey who says, Hi! How are you today? We're... Uh... We're rehearse... We're, we're re here. Oh, oh, I, oh, I see. I'm they're so together. I'm. Ah, we're here with Adam Bombay. Don't you want to ask him a question? Oh, this is just annoying. He's talking like the Flash. Anyway, or do you want to have a crack at one of our valuable prizes? Ask him a question or try for a prize. Try for a prize. Get ready for the question, here it comes. What album contains Adam's hit song, Belching It Out For Love? Adam Bombay's Best of the Worst, World War Three, or Indigestion? Indigestion. <laughs> you are absolutely correct! The station... No. The station... Really? Would like to give you a copy of Adam's newest album and two free tickets with backstage passes to his next concert. Adam himself you know. tells you goodbye and says that he can't wait to meet you at the show. Could you <laughs> scream? There you go. Meeting Adam Bombay. I'm Every girl's on dream. <laughs> selling it on eBay. I'm selling on eBay and buying a PS3, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, this is the 80s, so you'd be buying what? Like, you'd be buying an, a Nintendo Entertainment System, damn it. Or a ColecoVision. <laughs> Tara, a Tara, a foreign friend from Jamaica, asks you over to her house for dinner. Your first course is an interesting-looking kind of soup. You take a sip and find it delicious. You inquire, what kind of soup is this? Tara's mother replies, uh, with a proud smile on her face, 
Turtle Soup. You can be horrified, ambivalent, or open. Open. You're the one person in school not a racist. <laughs> try yes. to eat. Try to the eat. One person in this game. Try to eat all of the soup. Eat a little more of the soup, or stop eating the soup and hope no one notices. Try to eat all the soup. Apparently found it delicious. So. Your willingness to experience new things is remarkable. Besides, those little pieces of meat taste just like chicken. Your adventurousness delights Tara's mom, who shows you pictures of her island and tells you about its people and customs. Intellectual sphere rises. Yay! How a genius. Apparently. A group of kids you hardly know have just made fun of you. Usually, this might not bother you. <laughs> okay. You suck! <laughs> yeah, I hate you, girl, walking on the street. I hate your shoes. <laughs> hey, screw you, Malibu! Uh, usually, this might not bother you. Because you, you know, post to YouTube. Thus, you are used to this. <laughs> But lately, you have been feeling down in the dumps about a lot of things. Your physical appearance has been disappointing you. Aww. Your family has been giving you a hard time about almost everything. Aww. And no one seems to be saying or doing anything positive towards you. I'm saying something positive towards you, Phoenix. You're great. Yay. You have a bad case of the blues. <laughs> you can de be depressed slash sad suicidal, or feeling just fine. Feeling just fine. So you're going to be in denial. Uh-huh. Good. You can talk to someone, <laughs> get drunk or stoned, or let it pass. <laughs> talk to someone. You made an inappropriate response. Please choose again. What? Well, you wouldn't need to talk to someone. I mean, you wouldn't talk to someone if you're in denial. <laughs> Fine, I will be sad and talk to someone. Who would you like to talk to? Someone in your family? A friend or a psychologist? <laughs> Sex is death. <laughs> A leap into the oh, void. <laughs> A tiger in space. A plea for annihilation. Family. To deny sex is to deny death itself. Your family is understanding and supportive. They don't actually tell you anything magical, but it lifts your spirits to know that they care enough about you to listen. My friends are douchebags. Why would I talk to them? <laughs> you were at a New Year's Eve party with a guy you are seeing. <laughs> uh, so I'm assuming it would be Peter. <laughs> your best friend and her date. Your best friend is a guy? Alright, fine. Everyone seems to be caught up in the spirit of the holiday. It's when midnight strikes, you give your boyfriend a nice big hug and kiss. Then turn around to wish some of your friends a happy new year. When you turn around again, you see your boyfriend and your best friend stuck together in a lip lock. You can be angry or cool. A a angry or what? Angry or cool. Angry. Grr. Cool? <laughs> what the hell? You can say something to your girlfriend? <laughs> I agree, Phoenix. You need to talk this out with your girlfriend. Uh, you can say something to your boyfriend, or you can say nothing. Say something to my friend. Which one? Girlfriend or boyfriend? Well, I'm the... well, assuming the friend is the girlfriend since I was supposed to kiss the boy. So you want to talk to the girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. They both look at you as you have, as if you have two heads. Maybe you were overreacting. What? Later on that evening, you see him with his hand on her leg. Yeah. Hmm. Are you still actually going out with him? I'm just curious. We need to check this. No, you're still going steady with Peter. Are we sure this is Peter? I'm pretty sure it says your boyfriend, so... I don't know. Whatever. You need a job, but I don't think you can get one yet. You're still losing money. You're down to like $300. A friend of yours has told you that on the wall of one of the stalls in the boys' bathroom, Kirby Ross, probably another one of your boyfriends, has written a poem about you that... 
about you and various sex acts that you are willing to perform. Given your character history, he's probably <laughs> right. You can sneak into the bathroom after school and remove it, tell the principal, or ignore the whole thing. Tell the principal. The principal doesn't want to be bothered by you right now, but when you recite the poem, he turns very red. Kirby gets suspended for a week. Yay. He spends it in dreamland. Oh, wait, no, sorry, wrong Kirby. <laughs> a friend of yours at school has gotten pregnant. At 14? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and has decided to get married. The whole town is buzzing about it as if it were an awful scandal. Your mother has been gossiping about it night and day with her no with her nosy friends. Every once in a while, she tells someone on the phone, if that were my daughter, I'd lock her up until she was 25 before I ever let her out on a date again. Your friend is frightened and embarrassed. One day, you receive a phone call from your friend. She tells you that her boyfriend will be quitting high school and going to work full time. They will be married in three weeks. She wants to know whether you should whether you would consider being a bridesmaid at her wedding. You can't actually get a job at 14, but whatever, you know. You can be flattered or embarrassed. Flattered. You can agree to be your bridesmaid or decline the invitation. Agree. Have you ever actually been a bridesmaid? No, but a similar situation has in fact happened. Really? I was mm -hmm. a bridesmaid once. <laughs> that was a weird a wedding. Soon, Really? As it turns out, the wedding is small, but touching. Your friend is in her mother's wedding dress, which seems too large and too long. As you watch her- yeah, because she's 14. Anyway, and much too long. As you watch her walk down the aisle, you couldn't possibly imagine trading places with her. The groom looks terrified. His father rests a strong hand on his shoulder throughout the ceremony. As you eye the people who are attending, you see some people crying tears of happiness and others shaking their heads and gossiping. Later in the day, you overhear a woman say, If that were my daughter, I would I would die. Five minutes later, she tells your friend's mother how beautiful and mature her daughter looked. Sometimes adults can be so two-faced. It can make you sick. Yep. Alright. <laughs> Early in the evening, a friend's mother appears mysteriously at the door and asks to speak to you. to Oh, to your mother. From another room. You hear the woman say that you have been a bad influence on her daughter and that your mother should try harder to raise you the right way. I wonder why. <laughs> her complaints, by the way, are totally unjustified. First, you barely know her daughter. And second, she is the biggest tramp in town without your help or anyone else's. <laughs> you can be furious, guilty, or calm. Furious. You're furious? You know, your gentleness is way down. Calm. Alright. Give this woman a piece of your mind, wait until she leaves, then have a talk with mom, or do nothing. Wait till she leaves and talk with mom. You are confident that this woman is not being totally accurate. You guess that your mother won't believe a word of what she is saying. Naturally, she doesn't. You choose the most mature set of responses. Thanks to me. Sure. <laughs> You have just been given the female lead role in the school play opposite Kurt Harris. Voted mm. hottest bod of the century by classmates. Oh, this game is dumb. <laughs> that role calls for a very heavy love scene. Unaware that you are within hearing distance, Kurt learns that you are his female lead and blurts out, I can't kiss her, I'd puke. You can be angry, depressed, or unflappable. Unflappable. Once again, you just wanted the opportunity to say the word unflappable. <laughs> That's more of a question. You can quit the show, say something to him, or do nothing. Slash, the show must go on. Say something to him. You can say, Fuck you, Kurt. You, what makes you think I'm so happy about kissing you, jerk face? Or that's just about the crudest thing anyone has ever said about me? C. Yes, he is quite crude. As it turns out, he was only saying that to keep up his macho front with his friends. The fact is, he is scared to death to have to play a love scene with you. 
the more you work with him, the more you realize that he is the ultimate turd. <laughs> Did they really say that? Yes. <laughs> <sighs> You are currently madly in love with a guy who is having a birthday next week. You are trying to think of what to get him. Since money is tight, you really should be careful about what you're willing to buy. You can be generous, have mixed feelings, or not be that generous. I guess be generous. You can buy him the window breaker car stereo he's had his eye on. Being 14, I'm not sure why he needs it since he couldn't get a driver's license yet, but whatever. Or you can buy him something else. Something else? You can still be generous and not have to sell your blood to pay for gifts. Your intellectual st sphere status shows that you are smart enough to come up with an inventive gift idea which he loves and which doesn't leave you penniless. Yay! Right before you go out on a, a big date, you learn, you lean your hand against a wall and snap! You break your fingernail. How did I do that? <laughs> I have no idea. But from what I understand, that is the most terrifying thing that can possibly happen to a woman, right? Sure. There is a tub of lock bond glue all in the drawer. Really? <laughs> self-conscious or not self-conscious? Not self-conscious. You can glue the nail, which will make you look like an idiot. Or you can file the nail down and forget it. File it down. <laughs> Why would you glue it together? What's wrong with you? Alright, you are not going to let a little nail ruin your whole evening. This is a great attitude. Your date comments on how beautiful you are and never even notices. Because cause you know what? A man will never look at a woman's fingernail. <laughs> never. Ever. Freaking... <laughs> I tell you. Your dad's boss thinks that you are a fine young woman. As do we all. He would be... That would be the washing machine screwing up. There's a loud buzzing sound. That's gonna get annoying. So I'm gonna stop the video and deal with it. Give me a second. <laughs>